Uh, today the committee will hear about the lessons we've learned from the financial crisis regarding community banks. I want to thank the FDIC and the GAO for coming to testify pursuant to a statutory requirement to brief us on bank failures and their causes. This is a critical issue since small banks represent the lifeblood of many communities across America and especially rural communities in Idaho and elsewhere. In fact, the FDIC's community banking study commissioned by Chairman Marty Gruenberg shows that community banks hold the majority of banking deposits in rural counties, with one in five U.S. counties having no other banking presence. Banking used to be a community-based enterprise, relying on local knowledge and expertise to extend credit based on creditworthiness of the bank's depositors. Many community banks continue to operate that way even today. Despite the many benefits of such relationship-based banking, the industry has become increasingly concentrated since the 1980s. The number of banking organizations has shrunk by nearly one-third from 1990 to 2006. And most of this contraction has involved small community banks, whose numbers have now fallen by more than 3,000 during that time. The financial crisis of 2008 only exacerbated the consolidation trend. Between January 2008 and December 2011, 414 U.S. banks failed, according to the GAO. One of, of those, 85%, or 353 banks, had less than $1 billion in assets. Those banks often specialized in small business lending. So their failure has had a disproportionately large impact on small business lending and local employment. We must carefully examine what led to such a large number of small banks closing and the residual effect on local communities. We also need to be able to put this most recent crisis in perspective and examine how it compares to past community bank crises. While this hearing is focused on lessons learned from most recent financial crisis, much can be learned from the post-crisis response as well. The regulatory framework that emerged out of Dodd-Frank has made it increasingly difficult for community banks to maintain and operate their business presence in many communities. Community banks are disproportionately affected by increased regulation because they are less able to absorb the additional cost. The majority of community banks today have $250 million or less in assets, according to the GAO, which often translates into a one- or two-person compliance department. Small institutions simply do not have the resources necessary to review and parse through thousands of pages of new rules. As a result, many community and small banks have identified Dodd-Frank as imposing overwhelming regulatory burdens on them or serving as barriers to entry. As Federal Reserve Governor Duke outlined in a November 2012 speech, if the effect of a regulation is to make a traditional banking service so complicated or expensive that significant numbers of community banks believe they can no longer offer that service, it should raise red flags and spur policymakers to reassess whether the potential benefits of the regulation outweigh the potential loss of the community bank's participation in that part of the market. I believe we've reached that point, and I look forward to the testimony from our witnesses today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.